Hey everybody, now, you may be wondering why does your hair look like that, Miss Mo? Well, I'll tell you why. Because two reasons. Reason number one, my school where I'm the librarian at Eureka Elementary School and Eureka Middle School, we're having a readathon. And if the kids raised $2,000, then all the teachers had to do crazy hair day. So, this is my crazy hair. And I've had it in all day and I've thought, hey, why not tell a story? But the real reason I'm also wearing it while I tell a story is because my wonderful niece, Maisie, what's up Maisie, in Oklahoma thought that I looked so pretty with my braids. So I promised her mother that I would tell a story so that everyone could see my beautiful, crazy, gray-haired braids. So here's some Miss Mo crazy hair coming at you with a story. Now next month is March and in March comes a very special holiday and that is St. Patrick's Day. And so to get ready for St. Patrick's Day I thought I'd tell you the quick story of a wonderful big giant and his very smart wife. Now, the giant's name is Finn McCool, and his wonderful wife is Unag. So, shall we hear the story of Finn and Unag? Then let's get it going. Even on Crazy Hair Day, we start stories the same way. Lap and clap. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go with Miss Mo. Two more. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go with Miss Mo. Last time. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go with Miss Mo. Shh. Now, if you were to travel Ireland, which someday I really hope to be able to do, because if there's any country in the world that can tell good stories, it's Ireland. They tell lots of wonderful stories. But if you go to Ireland, and then here's England, there's a bridge between it. But it's not a bridge of wood or cement or anything like that. It's called the Giant's Causeway. It's these huge, enormous boulders. Now, scientists have all these different hoity-toity explanations of how the Giant's Causeway came to be. And you can look those up and find pictures of it. But I tend to like this version, which is those rocks were put there by a certain man, a very large man by the name of Finn McCool. Now, Finn McCool was one of the biggest giants in all of Ireland. In fact, some may have said he was the biggest giant. But there was one giant, just a little bit bigger, who lived across the ocean, and his name was Cuculin. Now, every giant was afraid of Cuculin. He was huge, and he kind of slobbered, and he had this crazy red hair, and he had beaten up every single giant in Ireland and Scotland except one, our good old friend Finn McCool. Now, this was not because Finn McCool was exceptionally tough. It was because he was exceptionally good at running away. And so when Finn McCool would hear Kukulin stomping and slobbering and coming to get him, he'd pick up all of his stuff and he'd run, run, run away. Well, while he was running, he fell in love with a beautiful giantess whose name was Unag. And soon they got married and soon Unag was going to have a baby. Now they lived at the tip, tip top of a mountain. And at the bottom of the mountain, Finn was working on building the bridge from Ireland to England. Huge, huge boulders as big as my house. And he'd pick them up and he'd splash them down. And he'd pick another up and he'd splash another one down. And while he was working on this bridge, the giant's causeway, he heard a terrible sound, and the water began to shake, and the rocks began to shake, and he heard a sound, Cuckoo, it's coming! Where's Finn McCool? Well, Finn did what he always did when he heard Cuckoo coming for him. He picked up his stuff, and he ran. He ran up to the top of the mountain, and he opened the door, and he said, Oh, Nag, we've got to go. Cuckoo, coming. Pack your bags. Well, Unag was very big with a giant baby. And she said, no, I'm not going anywhere. We've run and we've run and we've run. And if you'll listen to me, we won't run again. So do exactly as I say, because I'm not leaving. Well, Finn McCool could tell when he was beat. And so he asked his wife what he should do. And she gave him some very specific directions. First, 
she said. I want you to go to all the neighbor's house until you have ten iron pans, and I want you to bring them back here. This was a very strange thing to do, but Finn listened to a knock. So he went from house to house, knocking on all the doors until he got ten big iron pans and he brought them back and he saw Unag baking bread. What are you doing, woman? Why are you baking bread? We've got a giant Kukulin coming after us. Now, let me pause here and tell you a little bit about Kukulin. You know, he slobbers and he has huge red hair and he's very angry all the time, but he also has something that's very unique. You see, he had one finger that was made out of gold. We don't know where it came from or how he got it or anything, but we do know that it is what gave him his phenomenal power and strength. That finger was something special, and nobody had ever defeated him because of that finger. So when Finn saw his wife baking bread instead of doing something a little more powerful, he was very confused. But he gave her the pans and listened for his next direction. Well, as she started shaping the bread and putting the pans where she wanted them to go, she turned to him and she said, Very good, Finn. Now I want you to go and find ten white stones about this big. They have to be white and smooth and this big. Can you do that, Finn? Yes, Sunag. So Finn went back down to the ocean and he spread along the rocks until he found ten beautiful white stones just the way Unag wanted them. And he carried him back up to the house and he set them down and she began to clean them. Well, he could smell the bread baking and he watched her cleaning. And then he watched her start to make cheese. Cheese? What good is cheese going to do us against a man like Kukulin? <sighs> Shh, says Unag. Just do as I say, Finn. Fine. What do you want me to get next? And she looked at him and she said, You don't have to get a thing. I want you to go upstairs and I want you to get my best pink bonnet and my best pink nightgown and I want you to put them on. What? Woman? Says Finn McCool. You want me to put on your pink nightgown and your pink bonnet? Yes, says Unak. And Finn started to rage, but he looked at his wife's calm face. They took a breath, and he decided to trust her. So he stomped upstairs, and he pulled off his hat, and he put on a pink bonnet, and he put on her beautiful pink nightgown, and he stomped back down the stairs. And she told him that he looked very handsome indeed. Then she pointed to the little baby's cradle in the corner, and she said, get in that. And don't say a word. Just do whatever I say. Can you do that? Yes, says Finn McCool. Good, because if you do, we'll both stay alive and we'll never have to face Kukulin again. Well, the bread was all cooked and she took it out of the, out of the oven and set it all out. Ten big, beautiful loaves of bread. Now, what Finn didn't know was that inside nine of those loaves of bread was an iron pan, one of the pans that he had gotten. And then she made a big pile of the white rocks, and right next to the pile of the white rocks, she made a small pile of things that looked like white rocks, but it was cheese. And he started to wonder just what this Unag was up to. But he didn't have much time to wonder, because at that moment the door began to shake. Cool and here, and where is Finn McCool? You didn't know I was actually from Scotland, did you? And the door is shaking until it comes completely off the hinges, and there stands the slobbering, red-headed hair that's almost as crazy as mine, giant Kukulin, I've come for Finn McCool. Where is he? Well, he stomps inside the house, and there's Unag. And she had wrapped a big robe around her so he couldn't see her big belly. And there she was, and he looks in the corner, and there he sees a huge baby in a pink bonnet and a pink nightgown stuffed into a cradle with his arms and his legs hanging out and he wonders what on earth is going on with that huge baby and he looks at the woman and he says where's your husband Finn McCool and Unag says oh 
Finn's out working. But why didn't you come in? I was just about to feed the baby. That's his wee boy in the corner. Kukulin looks at that enormous baby and he thinks to himself, that's the baby of Finn McCool? If his baby's that big, maybe I don't want to fight this boy. But he sits down because he's hungry and he's thirsty and he happens to notice there's bread and cheese. So Unag says, would you like some bread? I've made a lot of bread. Finn eats so much bread. This is his favorite recipe. Would you like some? Yay! So first Unag picks up a loaf of bread that does not have a pan in it and she gives it to Finn. And Finn opens his mouth, home, takes a bite of the delicious soft bread, and in two bites, the loaf of bread's gone. Then she takes a loaf to Kukulin. Here you go. Ooh, that's a heavy loaf of bread, Kukulin thinks. He opens his mouth and clunk, cling, a tooth pops out and hits the window, breaks it. Oh, oh, what's in this bread? And then he looks at the baby who's just licking his fingers after eating the bread in two bites and he thinks that baby ate this bread that broke my teeth and that's his baby i don't think i want to fight finn the ghoul oh you don't like the bread says unog well how about some cheese i just gave some to the baby here now this is when she gives the baby a real piece of cheese and he takes it and he squeezes it and he pops it in his mouth. Mmm. Then, oh, Kukulin picks up his rock and he takes it and he squeezes it, but nothing comes out and he pops it in his mouth and clang, there goes another tooth. And he thinks to himself, that baby ate this cheese? I can't even swallow it. I don't want to fight this baby's father. Oh, and he starts to stand up and think maybe he'll wait and fight another day. Well, then his wife says, you aren't leaving, are you? You know, my husband's running a little late and I was wondering if you could do me a favor. You see, my husband knows that I love to watch the sunrise and the sunset, but we only have one window in our house. And so in the morning, my window faces east so I can watch the sunrise. But every night, right around now, right at dinner time, he goes outside, he picks up the house, he turns it around so that the window's facing west, and then I can watch the sun go down. But since he's not here, could you do it for me, please? Kukulin thinks to himself, this man picks up his house every day, twice a day, so his wife can see the sunrise and the sunset, and his baby eats cheese, and his baby eats bread like this has broken my teeth. What have I done? But he couldn't let himself look weak in front of his wife, Unag, in front of Finn McCool's wife, of course. And so Kukulin goes out, and he lifts, and he strains, and he pushes, and he pulls, and he sweats, and his veins are popping, and he's drooling even more, and his hair's starting to fall out. And finally, he gets the house up, and he turns it into, ugh, and he gets it back down. And now, Unag has a beautiful view of the sunset as the sun dips below. And the man comes in in a sweat and he's drooling and his hairs and coming out in clumps. And he looks at the baby and the baby is rocking back and forth, happy. Finn McCool is so grateful to be married to such a smart woman. And then Unag says, well, before you go, would you like to say goodbye to Finn's baby? Would you like to meet him? Oh, I'd like to meet such a special lad as this. So he goes over and he looks at the baby and he says, this is the biggest baby I've ever seen. How did he eat those things? What's he got there in that mouth of his? And then he takes his golden finger and he pokes it towards the baby's mouth and Finn McCool opens his mouth ah, ah, and Kukulin laughs and he says, oh, look at that big mouth. And he sticks his finger down and Kukulin screams as Finn McCall chomps down and bites off his golden finger. Ah! Kukulin screams, oh, 
Oh, if that's the baby, I want nothing to do with the father. Tell Finn McCool he'll never see the face of Cuckoolin again. Ah! And with that, our slobbering red-headed Scottish giants runs out of their door, down the mountain, leaps across the stones of the giant causeway that Finn had just built, and disappears in Scotland. And Unag and Finn and their bouncing baby boy, who came just a few months later, never had to leave their house again. And every time Unag, from that day on, said to Finn, I've got an idea, Finn was smart enough to listen. <laughs> Miss Mo, Miss Mo, Miss Mo has got to go. Two more, Miss Mo, Miss Mo, Miss Mo has got to go. Last time, Miss Mo, Miss Mo, Miss Mo has got to go. Bye. Hope you liked that little Irish tale, and I hope you liked my crazy hair. Have a wonderful day, and if you like this video, then tell me below. Like it, share it, subscribe to it. And there will be many more Miss Mo episodes to come. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.